Hello, and welcome to the second season of our show, The Newark Debater. My name is Aziz Richardson. And my name is Thais Guaman. Here at The Newark Debater, we aim to provide the youth perception of issues happening in and around their community by empowering them to create their own news media sources. Here at The Newark Debater, we strive to provide a space for youth to express themselves and for new, real news to get heard. And we appreciate the viewers for being here to witness our development and el evolution. Our last episode, we discussed homophobia and sexism in our public school system and the effects it has on our psyche and our poli political development as young future leaders. We had a panel discussion with current high school students about what they witness every day and whether or not they believe their school system eliminates to um, works to eliminate hate and prejudice led by Willie Johnson, the head coach of the Newark debate team. Um, the episode highlighted the roles that students play in advocating for themselves as political subjects in their, so their schools, and we learned about how you as a student can use your voice to speak up for whatever is important for you. If you want to watch a great episode about the, ad the student advocacy rights, you can go to www.youtube.com slash the Newark Debater, and make sure to, to share and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you. Today's episode will focus on the effects of social media of youth across the country when it comes to personal advocacy as future leaders. The most popular creation since the technology boom of the mid-2000s has been social media networking. S social media acts as a worldwide Rolodex, connecting billions of people who come from all backgrounds, religions, and political affiliations into one space of constant communication and idea sharing. News gets broken in real time to a wider audience. Corporations are able to engage with their customers directly without long drawn customer service calls. And even our president, our own president, uses Twitter as an outlet to um, voice criticism of his office dealings. Now, more than ever, social media is extremely important in the free production and networking of ideas. And now, more than ever, the potential for online distraction as present as ever. But how do we use social media as a tool for us instead of allowing social media to distract and control us by overloading us with billions of opi opinions? Today you will hear from both youth in Newark and couple teachers who will share the important, about the importance of social media in their personal lives, their professional lives, and their lives as students. We will explore the, po the po uh, positive possibilities of using social media as a tool for our adv advocacy along with the talk about the negative impact too of social media usage can can have to our psyches and our social community of development. These are hundreds of millions, if not billions of people on social media. And here at the Newark Debater, you believe that the conversations like this one you'll hear today are important for the generations behind us. Remember, if you enjoyed the discussion that we will have today, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash the Newark Debater. And share it with people in your life that you think can benefit from hearing today's discussion. If you have any recommendations for topics we should discuss in the future or that you see in your everyday life, email us at thenorkdebater at gmail.com and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Now before we continue, here is some news you may have missed. Hello, my name is Taylor Vermont and I'll be presenting to you what's hot on the block. First, the shout out goes out to New Jersey. You may have heard us mention it before, but if you haven't, after a little more than two decades of being under state control, North public schools have finally regained local control. North's transition plan, which has been recently approved by the New Jersey Department of Education, got an enthusiastic thumbs up from former Governor Chris Christie before he left office stating that this plan puts the district in the best position to, to transition to full local control while ensuring that it builds on the progress it has made over the years. New Jersey has been on a roll lately. Our second shout out of the day goes to North specifically for being an official Amazon finalist. The world's largest online retailer announced in New Jersey's largest city is among the 20 it is considering for its second headquarters. Seattle-based Amazon narrowed the list of 238 contenders for the project to 20 and North was one of them. The company's promise of $5 billion in construction and up to 50,000 permanent jobs has made its decision among the most highly anticipated in the history of corporate expansions. Finally, North officials presented double Grammy winning, sing winning singer, gospel music legend, and North native Sissy Houston 
with the key to the city and renamed a street in honor during her ceremony on January 27th at 2 p.m. Sissy Houston is one of Newark's greatest native daughters, Mayor Roz Baraka said. Her singing talent expresses our highest values, inspires and empowers audience both around the world and here in our neighborhoods. She is a pioneer and advocate for the arts and one of the greatest legends in musical and Newark history. Congratulations, Mrs. Houston. That's all for today, and now back to our show. Join us in welcoming our guests for today's panel. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to share your knowledge and opinions with us as well. The Newark Debater, we appreciate you. For those who might not know, Bradley Gom Gomia <laughs> was actually the first student host of the show when we first got started. Welcome back, Bradley. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. No problem. Could you explain to our audience a bit about the program you were in, Seagull, and, and where you have been for these past few months? So SEGL, the School for Ethics and Global Leadership, was a school located in Washington, D.C. And basically the name says, is a basic summary of what it is. We learned, we had an ethics and leadership class along with our regular classes that we took that we would take in our home school, our ascending school. And those classes basically consisted of um, case studies in which we would learn about different topics such as one of the topics being the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, another one being um, the criminal justice system. And we got to meet with a lot of guest speakers as well. And it overall was just a, a very good experience. It lasted for a semester from August to December. And I just got back, now I'm back here at Science. That's good. What would you say has been your most memorable experience thus far? One of my most memorable experiences would have to have been when we went to the Obama Foundation. I mean, Obama wasn't there because he was in Asia for something, but it was really cool because we got to meet, um, we got to meet the guy who basically ran it and he worked closely with Obama. His name is David Seamus. And he talked to us a lot about sharing our stories with other people and what the Obama Foundation is doing right now after his presidency. And it was pretty cool. There were a lot of other experiences that were very, very memorable. Like, it's hard to sum up in words what SEGO was, but it was, it was pretty cool. Seems like a nice program. So what's the role that social media plays in your professional and personal life? So first, personal, I guess. I use social media to just communicate with people. It's especially good because you don't need to pay for it. I think it's like a benefit of it. So I have a Facebook and an Inst a Facebook. <laughs> and <laughs> so I use Edmodo, which is like, it could be considered a social media platform. And also, if email counts, I think I use email a lot for professional things. It's just. Being able to communicate with other people is something that social media is good for. In my personal life, I probably just use it to communicate with friends and family, especially fa like friends that are very far away. Like I can't go to Washington State all the time to see my friend that lives there. So social media is a great way to keep in contact with them, and that's how I use it mostly. So how often do you think you um, use social wait, media? Wait, wait, Thais. Um, I think we have a answer over there. All right. Um, so in terms of professional, I'd say that for the after school clubs and stuff that I do outside of school, I probably use social media there. Like my Sadie Nash program, anytime we have a meeting or something, they'll post an announcement or a field trip for a plus one that we use to get different prizes on their Instagram page. So I use that to contact with them. But also for personal reasons, just to contact with friends that obviously you can't see all the time, or just like what Bradley said, to contact friends that may live in another state that you can't just walk outside and easily just see them there just waiting for you. So I guess overall, it's uh, it actually plays a somewhat large part of my life, but simply just for communication, and also the memes are awesome. <laughs> oh, we have another answer. 
So I don't have a Facebook or a Twitter. I have a Snapchat, but I'm very like selective on who I pick, like to add or like who I love to add me. I I don't know. I don't use social media like most people. I usually try to. Um, I usually as a way to communicate and like I only like watch people's stories or add people that I would actually like care to look at what they post. Yeah. So. So next question, how often do you participate in social media? Well, probably every day. It's just, it's just for me to like communicate with other people. So I might not always be going through my, my feed, but just to use Messenger as something to communicate with my family or friends. I think we have an answer from day. over there. Um, I use social media mostly every day. Um, so I use it for also like um, like the previous person said for selective reasons, but I have a lot of social media accounts and I use it every day and I use it for not only contacting um, my friends who like for example I have a friend who lives in Florida she just moved I can't just go to Florida to meet her. Um, I also use it for news so uh, I get my news mostly from social media and so I, I look at it. Do you think your usage of social media interferes with networking and socializing in the real world? No, not really. I know this is like something that comes up a lot with people. Like when we talk about social media, people tend to say that social media kind of detracts from real life interactions. But I tend to, I'd like to believe that I have a good mix of the two. And I don't really use social media unless I have to. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Facebook message somebody if they're in the same room as me. So I think there's times when um, social media can actually help with networking and socializing and can eventually lead up to those real life and real world situations. Like, if you wanted to plan a meeting with somebody in the real world, you could use social media in order to make that happen. Oh, we have an answer over there. <coughs> so, just like what Bradley said, I'm pretty sure I have a somewhat good mix. Like, obviously, if somebody's in the same room as me, I wouldn't Facebook message them just because I can easily turn around to them. Unless, like, I'm trying to be funny and then just, like, look at them while they're looking at the message. But besides that, I'm pretty sure, like, it is a somewhat good mix. Like, I still go outside. Like, I can't be on my phone literally 24 seven. There are times where I literally just use my phone or social media just to make just to make plans with a friend just to go out later. And obviously I have parents who won't allow me to stay inside. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, since I'm like, I'm careful about who I choose to add and stuff like that. Um, I don't spend that much time on social media. I mean, I talk to like if I if I am on social media, I'm usually talking to someone I know or actually like, you know I've seen before or something of that. So if I've seen you before, then I'll probably like if I can't see you as much, then I'll probably talk to you. But um, like Tobey and Bradley have been saying, um, I I'm perfectly fine with like social interaction and stuff like that. I like to talk to people, you know. So yeah. Um, Bradley. So do you think that you get like a lot of your news from like your social media? Um, not all of it. I mean, I do get some some of it from social media. Like I follow PBS NewsHour and The Economist, so that those are more reliable sources. I don't like to rely on just going through my newsfeed and getting those little articles that people post up. I tend to even if I do see them, I tend to try to check the source too. A lot like him, I do check the sources because there is fake news out there. You know, people just post stuff. Um, for uh, to, to get like a, a rise out of the public, um, but okay, so so um, I also follow like certain um, cer certain news outlets. outlets, news outlets, um, and certain causes such as uh, like I follow. So I follow certain people who I feel are important in the world. 
Um, like I'm a big fan of Emma Watson, so I follow her, and she's a very um, she's an activist for women's rights. So I follow her, and, and I um, and so I, I look at all the all the stuff she's doing, and all the stuff she's doing for our community and for for the world, basically. So so yeah, I feel like social media does help me um, understand the world and understand the current news and current. So, do you think, Bradley, do you think social movements that start on the internet can work in the long run? Um, I would say yes, actually. Uh, if a, I don't think, like, the start is just, it's not, I feel, um, in terms of being able to sustain the social movement, though, I think being solely on the internet, maybe the, it couldn't, it wouldn't be able to like, make actual change in the real world, but definitely starting on the internet. I know a lot of things that have started on the internet just because social media, like one of the main functions of social media is connecting people that wouldn't otherwise be able to talk to each other. So I can talk to my cousins all the way in Liberia about things that they're going through. And from that, a social movement can start. If we're talking about our common, like common problems that we face and figuring out how what caused those problems. So what we're looking to do with the North Students Union is give students a platform on which they can voice their opinions and be able to actually check those people in powers and affect the policies that are enacted on us. So take for instance um, the new superintendent, whether or not we'll be involved in that should be a topic of discussion at our meetings with the North Students Union, as well as things from lack of resources to um, how students are treated overall and um, understaffed schools and teacher positions and things like that. Um, but about the, the social media thing, we actually are connected. We actually do use social media to get the word out about a few things. Um, you, we have a Facebook page, which is just the Newark Students Union. Also, we have, I believe, a Twitter and an Instagram. Show people how their schools are being destroyed. We will be here until we see justice. We'll never be the We're going to come here and yell in your faces because we have to show you guys that this is incorrect. The North community has spoken loudly and clearly. Wait, We're yeah. live. We're live. A few weeks ago, we occupied the superintendent's office for 72 hours. The sit-in received a groundswell of support from North and beyond including talk show host Montel Williams. Today's student walkout represented the strongest show of student solidarity in the state takeover I have era. A Gmail, which is just Newark Students Union at gmail.com. And we're actually working on a, a website right now, which is newarkstudentsunion.org. Right now you can go on it and you'll see like the skeleton of the website. We're still working on it, but basically we'll use that in order to connect more students, do what social media or like the internet was made for, just connect people on one issue, and this issue in particular being um, a greater education. Thank you so much for that, Bradley. Really doing a lot for the community. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but before we go, a quick game to close out the show. Okay, Debate. so this... What? Debate game. So this game is called Two Truths and One Lie. So basically, we're gonna be saying three statements. Two of them will be a truth, and then one of them will be a lie. And the audience will be the ones to determine whether or not the, um, the lie is. So each person's going to say the craziest thing they've seen on social media, and the audience will debate which one's a lie. I'll go first. So on social media, I have seen a person getting their bones breaking, a maggot being oh. removed from a person's ear, or a deer being ran over by a car. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that last one? So, which one do you think is the lie? You said bones being breaking. Do you mean broken? <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Which one is the lie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, do you mind repeating them? <laughs> so, a bones being broken. <laughs> um, a maggot being removed from a person's ear, and a deer being ran over by a car. Mm. A magnet being removed by a person's ear is the lie. No. A deer being ran over by no. a 
Y'all lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. I was thinking it was the first one because you just look shady with it. You didn't even use the correct tense. That's how I knew it was the first one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fairly, you go. <laughs> My turn? Okay, so on social media, I've seen a dog getting his paw cut off. Uh, a meme where Trump accepts immigrants for who they are. And I saw this video, it was so funny. It was like these, like a baby infant like talking to his little brother, but like it sounded like he was saying, you're, and then the baby responded with, you're. Uh, okay, so which one's the lie? I know it's not the last one. Anyways. The second one. The second one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the right one. Trump accepting immigrants. That is true. Which one? The second one? Okay, so yeah, Trump, uh, the meme about Trump accepting immigrants. Was a lie. Yes, it was, was a lie. lie. Um, Trump accepting immigrants <laughs> was a lie. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> These are so annoying. Next. Okay. okay. So, first, I saw this this video where this person <laughs> they like they were walking and they fell down one of those like manhole things <laughs> and then it just cut to them being dragged up <laughs> with like a a rope and they had like stuff all over their bodies it's like poop and stuff <laughs> <laughs> the next one is um this guy he like dodged a a, a dodgeball and he came like this close to his face he was like this and and it was like Oh, like, and it like, yeah. I saw that. So I close. saw that video. I know. What like, I'm it up. <laughs> anyway, the next one is um, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear anyway. The continue. next one is this mom. She she was trying to help her daughter with like bullies from her school, and she ended up getting beat up by the bullies. <laughs> the mom got I'm beat like, up right. by the bullies. Is the last one? Any other guesses? <laughs> I say the first one is the one. I feel like the last one was the one. Any other guesses? No, everything was too detailed, honestly. Yeah, yeah, the first one you were very cheesed about. The what second are the one. Guesses? Aziz piped in and said he saw exactly. it. Exactly, he already yeah. saw so it. The third one. I feel like it's the last one. It's the first one. No, nah, I feel like Bradley messed up and all of these are true. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first one. The first one was a lie. Yeah, <laughs> I was the right. One, the first one was a lie. Oh, oh, oh the like, one about somebody falling down a manhole and like being covered with poop was a lie. So I made it up. Yeah, all right, yes. so because <laughs> I, I I needed to fool y'all. So, I had to act like I it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for watching today's episode of the Derek the Manor. Tune in soon for another great episode. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Link below. Also, NSU, we lit, we live. Please, please yeah, never have a Z talk again.